In this video, we're doing an app review of Direct TV Stream running on the latest Apple TV 4K. So a while back, I did my talking head review of Direct TV Stream, talking about it basically as a service. Pricing, packages, pros and cons, how I use it, what I like about it, and that sort of thing. But I thought I'd do it more direct, no pun intended, look at the app uh, running on some popular devices. And so we'll start here with the latest revision of the Apple TV 4K 2021 model. So first off, you can see I've got the stream app on my top bar. This is the same bar that shows you high level information, contextual information about programs, things of interest, and so on, if the app supports it. Of course, not all apps support this. Many do, unfortunately, right off the bat, kind of one knock against it. DirecTV Stream doesn't. It would be really, really nice to see uh, a latest recording or the last channel that you were watching in the upper section for, uh, for that quick jump, other than this very generic and now kind of stale message about DirecTV Stream being here. In any case, let's go ahead and launch the app. All right, just to avoid any issues, avoid any chances of takedowns, I'm going to be really careful about I'm going to be really careful about what I show, and I might have to put some black black boxes or something up on the screen afterwards or or, or whatnot. But we'll, we'll see what happens with that. So I do have a channel tuned in the background. It's paused just to prevent the plain video. But you can see a couple things here right on the main UI clock in the upper right hand corner, 10:04 p.m. We have four major sections to the app guide, watch now, my library, and on demand. There's a search option and then settings, which can take takes us down into preferences and account areas. Um, if we look at the preferences, there's uh, preferences for default caption or caption status, parental control details, allowing restrictions for movie ratings, show ratings, and so on. I have this stuff turned off. There is an autoplay next episode um, I normally turn this off. I'm surprised I actually had that on, as well as a streaming quality setting. In this case, I'm set it. I'm set to best. I have pretty fast internet here, and a pretty large data cap, so I'm not too concerned about the the amount of amount of bandwidth that I'm using for streaming. Um, and then we can specify a home location. This where I'm uh, using this right now is considered my my home location. Interesting, when I went into the streaming quality and came back out, notice it didn't keep the state of my autoplay disablement, but seems to be working now. So I am using just the regular Apple TV remote, the latest model that came with the, the Apple TV 4K, and we'll try some of the interesting capabilities, uh, swiping and, and so on that, uh, that this remote provides and take a look at how they work. So let's start left to right. If we look first at the guide, we can see it's your general kind of vertically scrolling grid guide shows current time. I can scroll over to the right going off into the future quite a while. If I were going to be looking for something to record pretty well into the future on a service like this, I might not really be doing it so much on a device like this. I'd probably pull up the app or something on my phone to get back over to the left side, I do have to go all the way back to the current time. I don't believe there's a quick jump button to be able to do that. If I hit menu, it just takes me back out. I can come back into the guide though, I guess at the current location. If I go on the left here, you can see I can pull up a channel. And if I click that, I get more of a vertical scroll. What's on now, what was on before, what's coming up next, and more ways to to look at options, look at shows, and so on. If I click into a show, I get some metadata, nice backgrounds, and the ability to record. I can enable a recording. If it's something that's a series, there's some additional settings as well. These are all movies. We'll take a look at an actual series. I can add to favorites. That's favorites for the channel itself. And you can also see the hearts here. I can disable, enable and disable for favorites. And if I go over to the left, here's where I can get to uh, a filtered listing. So I'm currently on all. I had favorited channels before, I think in some of the upgrades or the 
service changeovers, I, I lost my favorites. You can tell I don't really use the guide that much, quite honestly. So I, I don't really have this outfitted very much. But you can quickly get to other things, what movies are showing on the live channels right now as an enabled metadata list. Same for TV shows. Sports is nice if you're looking, there's a, there's a game on that you know is on and you want to be able to quick jump to it. You can do that as well as some kids content also. So the built-in filters are, are actually pretty nice. They've also recently added this, which is actual channel numbers. Of course, channel numbers vary from service to service and cable system to cable system. So I don't know if these channel numbers actually correspond to what you might be used to if you were a DirecTV satellite subscriber. That would make sense, but I'm not entirely sure, so I don't want to claim that as a, as a specific fact. Um, in any case, I had this disabled. I don't really, I don't really use the channel numbers at all or, or haven't used a real cable or satellite subscription service in so long that um, there is also this nice, actually this answers an earlier question. You can tell again, I, I don't use the guide all that much, but we are able to jump to a current day. So as I record this, today is December 5th, and I can jump to 1218. So roughly two weeks of guide data, directly accessible in the app to be able to get to a show that might be happening uh, happening in the future. So again, if I go into one of these that's a series, you can see in this case, when it was a movie, it said record. In this case, it says record episode. If I do that, I can record either an individual episode or I can come over here to recording a series, which then gives me another option. Do I want to do all episodes of that series that are airing or only ones that are flagged as new? That's all the options that you get for subscribing or flagging series to be recorded. There's no ability like an old school TiVo to, to pad time um, onto the beginning or onto the end. So again, now here I'm way in the future. So if I wanted to get back to that filter list, my fastest way to do it is going to be to hit the back button and then re-enter the guide, which takes me to the current moment in time, and I can get over to the filters. I could see in the future, it'd be really nice to be able to take some of these things, take the guide, maybe take take your favorites filter or whatnot and put it on that top bar, uh, the top row of the Apple TV app as well, and be able to get to, the, get to the things or get to the way that you use this app most often. I'll go ahead and leave my guide here set to all. I can swipe. Um, I had been clicking up, down, left, and right. So swiping, of course, is a lot faster and if I do the swipe around the ring you can see sometimes it's taking me down sometimes it's taking me up all it's really doing as I go around the ring here is reading a combination of up and down swipes and left and right swipes which isn't uh, isn't terribly useful but the around the ring swiping is really more for playback management than anything else so let's go all the way back we'll go back to watch now so there's a bunch of jump lists here. Um, the first row basically shows you what's showing on channels that you've recently watched. So the, the order that you've tuned channels will be the order that they show up here in this list. I find this very convenient. Um, I think I mentioned in my YouTube review, for me particularly, I, I don't use this all that often. There's a, there's a special subset of content, a special uh, selection of things that I use my live TV service for. And so I tend to stick usually to the same or to a, a similar number, a small selection of channels, a relatively small selection of shows and events and that sort of thing. So for me, the items that are here in this list are small enough that I can come to watch now and I can get back to the channels that I usually watch, watch the most. Um, there is a continue watching for shows that you may have started you can continue continue watching in the same episode or continue watching to the next episode. And then starts, a, like most of these apps, um, a very long list of, of specific jump lists, uh, trying to present shows and things that may be of interest to you across a variety of, of metadata type categories. Sports, trending, holiday movies, of course timely, because I'm recording this a couple weeks before Christmas here, 2021. 
recommendations for things that I might want to record, premium series, premium movies, and so on and so forth. Kids, reality TV, all these different all these different options. And just like in YouTube TV and others, this goes pretty deep. Let me actually hit the bottom. But overall, I think these are pretty decent categories. If you're just tuning in and looking for something, you probably could find uh, find something to put on in the background or, or pass the time, right? Something of interest there for sure. Library of shows that you have marked uh, of interest. And there's actually two ways to do this. So. For shows, you can actually set your recordings, and that's kind of what I demonstrated earlier when we were looking at the one Our Planet show and setting up a series recording. So anything that you record comes in this DVR recording strip. However, you can also bookmark shows. And so bookmarking a show gives you a way to get back to them without always necessarily having to record them. So it might be something of interest, it might be something that you're watching or that you might be looking at on demand um, or whatnot, but it's it's two levels of flagging essentially to mark something that might be interesting to you. If I go here, all recordings again. Most of the time, when you drill in, the list goes vertical. The list starts horizontal, and then of course the list goes goes vertical after that. So you can see right here, there's some some information kind of clearly presented. My DVR hours are unlimited. Um, if you don't pay for the unlimited, then you have a finite number and the, the interface would show you what you have left. And then, of course, the fact that recordings expire after 90 days. So with unlimited DVR and 90 day retention, it kind of behooves you to record anything that you think you may want to watch ever and have it available uh, because of the ability to commercial skip and jump through things very quickly when you are in the recording DVR versus trying to play something on demand. And so we'll take a look at that. Let's just pull up here local news. So if we if we go ahead and start this, again, th as you drill in, the list goes vertical. So I can see the individual shows. I can come over to the trash can, giving me the ability to, un to delete a recording um, with a chance as well to undo it if I made a mistake. So, and then it goes away from the list. If I want to go ahead and play it, I'll hit enter. Um, one more opportunity. Do you want to watch now? Do you want to delete the recording? Let's go ahead and watch. You can see how quickly playback starts. So quality-wise, I've been happy with DirecTV Stream. Um, I didn't do enough AB or couldn't say enough where I, whether I felt that regular broadcasts on YouTube TV looked better versus this or whatnot. I can certainly say there's no 4K here, at least not yet. It'll be very nice once that finally comes, and I look forward to, I look forward to higher fidelity, live TV, cloud DVR, and, and all of that sort of thing. Notice the play bar on the bottom that came up when I paused, and they recently, just very recently, made some final nice additions to this app, and so that's the addition finally of these thumbnails. These haven't been here for the longest time but now we finally have them. So I'm pushing right, clicking right, clicking, clicking right, clicking left, and you can see I jump forward 30, and it shows me there that cumulative number of how much time I've, I've jumped. If I jump back, it jumps back in 15 second increments. I'm fine with that, 30 forward, 15 back is usually pretty good. That way if you do jump past something that you, something that you wanna see, you don't have to go back the full 30, you go back the 15 and you're not, you're not wasting a bunch of time. If I scroll with my thumb on the pad, you can see the thumbnails do keep up. It's a little, it could be a little smoother, I suppose, let's put it that way, in terms of the, the smoothness of the scroll and the jumping of the seconds. YouTube TV is a little, was a little cleaner responsive and so on but this gets the job done so if i'm watching a show and i want to get through commercials or get to a, a point later on in that show i can do the jumps while i'm playing back too so right here if i just touch the button it gives me the ability it shows me that we're going to go forward 30 seconds and what the thumbnail would be if i click it we can see there's the jump 1108 1138 
and so on. If I jump back, it's holding, it's all holding time properly. Thumbnail comes, the thumbnail goes. If I swipe down, this is the Apple TV, so I get the usual kind of Apple TV header menu, giving me some information, the ability to change some audio settings and so on, as well as quickly jump back to live TV. If I swipe up, I can, I can jump between channels. And again, this jump list is the channels that I've recently tuned in the order that I have recently tuned them. If I swipe left or right, of course, that's my playback control. I've got a nice little white bar there showing me where I was currently in the show. So if I decided, no, I don't wanna go ahead, I'm gonna go back. I can at least get myself around that same bar. And let's go ahead and jump back. If I hit the back button, you can see my content is still playing there in the background and my menu is an overlay on that. If I wanna go back to what I was watching, I hit back again and I get this return to video option at the top, which puts me right back in. I'm gonna go ahead and pause this and then go back to the menu. All right, one other thing to look at in here is the on-demand. Here there's a variety of ways, again, multiple jump lists, ways to find content. I can look into specific networks, premium networks, all networks. If I look at, say, AMC, I can see shows that are available on AMC. Take a look at The Walking Dead, 11 seasons, not including season one. This is what you get for pretty much every type of live television streaming service is all kinds of jankiness and unreliability in terms of what you might be able to watch on demand and how it might actually work. Um, in this case, you can see subscribers required here. So watching some of these AMC shows actually requires additional subscriptions or add-ons and so on. If I keep going back, let's take a look at like Animal Planet. New episodes are marked when new episodes have been added. So I can still here choose to record, record a series. I could bookmark this series to get back to it on demand. But let's take a look at what happens when I play an episode here. So there's my watch now. Channel logo. And surprisingly, we didn't get a pre-roll commercial. So this varies very greatly by network, by piece of content and so on. If you look close, you can see those little black diamonds. I count one, two, three, four, five. Those are the commercial breaks. So here we have uh, what essentially is an hour show, five commercial breaks. Let's go ahead and put playback up near, up near that first commercial. I can say in the in the on-demand content that I have watched, here we go, it's the commercials are generally pretty long. So we have ad number one of two, 180 seconds in total. I can't, I can pause, just in case you wanna pause that commercial and take your bathroom break and come back and watch it, like anybody would really do that. But that's it, there's no other controls here. I can see the, the top scroll, but that's it, so I'm stuck three minutes of commercials on that first dot. In my experience, not every dot is the same amount of commercials. I have seen some longer than three minutes. I have seen some shorter than three minutes. Some shows have them more, say, liberally added um, with many, many more dots per episode. Let's take a look at another one. If I go back into AMC here, let's go back to The Walking Dead. Let's take a look at the first episode, oh, that's nice. So you have to be a subscriber to watch episode one to AMC, the AMC add-on, but not episode two. Again, it's completely unsensible. This is not the way to use television <laughs> in general. So if you're using a live TV service and there's something that you may even remotely ever wanna watch, DVR it. And I think as I've said in prior videos on the channel, if you're serious about watching a TV show, you're not gonna watch it this way anyway. You're not gonna even watch it on direct TV stream. You're gonna watch it on some higher quality streaming service, hopefully at a higher quality, hopefully in 4K or whatever. Go buy the show on iTunes, something along those lines. You kind of get what you get what you pay for, you get what you expect when it comes to on demand. So here's a pre-roll ad, 30 seconds. And 
And so we're into the show, AMC animated logo. I guess that's nice. You see that first black diamond was at the very beginning of the show. Let's pause it here. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, five additional black diamonds for the remainder of this show. If we jump ahead again, this time six ads, 180 seconds. So the number of ads you get is variable. The amount of time that you might be sitting in them is variable too, but you can guarantee each one of these is gonna be three minutes. So you're really not saving yourself any time. You're not doing yourself any favors really to watch, watch television shows via on demand for any one of these services. This is an hour show, 40 minutes, 42 minutes, whatever of actual content. Even if every one of those dots was three minutes, you're talking 15 minutes there, plus the 30 seconds, there's your full hour. Again, if you even want to remotely watch the show, just don't use the on-demand. And I couldn't even imagine sitting through a movie, watching commercials in a movie. Some people do. You want to just watch some throwaway content. You want to put it on in the background. That's fine. Uh, we can show one more thing here. Search. So if I did a search for... Actually, they have some quick jumps that are in there. Let's clear so we can type something in. I'm actually getting fairly buggy operation with this right now. There we go. So let's do a search for, yeah, this, this is very broken. I don't, again, I don't usually do this in the app. I don't know that I would even recommend it. If you're looking for something, you wanna set up your DVR, you're gonna have a much easier time. Use the iPhone app, use the iPad app, or even just the web interface, do it on a computer where you can use a keyboard, you can click, you can set up all your shows, set up all your recordings. This this whole UI is just kind of broken. It's it's overlaying in a way that it shouldn't. Not a very good uh, not a very good showing there. But it was partial matching. That's nice. It was showing results as I was typing them. I can go into the show that I found, and again, it's all the same UIs. Once you're into a specific movie, you're into a specific show. Regardless of how you got there, through the guide, through the search on demand. There is some consistency there, so you can get to or get to the same piece of content a couple of different ways, and you still have all of your options. So I can still here record live, I can still bookmark, I can watch on demand and whatnot as I got there through as I got there through searching. One other thing to take a quick look at that kind of sets the Apple TV apart, of course, is the ring on the new remote and the ability to do the, the circular scrolling kind of the circular jumping i haven't found that to be very good quite honestly so if i start a piece of recorded content if i swipe left or right it works pretty solidly here if i swipe in a circle it's it's not the circular scrolling in direct tv stream it, it's a joke quite honestly you, you barely go forward if you want to go forward and then the circle as you as you should be able to rotate clockwise you should scroll forward as you rotate counterclockwise you should scroll backward it's never really worked in in any updates of the app since i've gotten this apple tv since i've been using it i just don't use it you want to go right have the scrolling on and scroll right you want to go left have the scroll or swipe rather swipe right swipe left or just click I find usually uh, I will I will swipe to try to get to a certain point, but if you're really trying to hone in, say I wanted to get to 10:05 here, it's I can't I can't even do it. Uh, there's 10:06. That's as close as I could get. So most of the time, when I want to jump commercials, I find myself just doing this, and then if I over jump, I go back, and I may end up rewatching. Uh, or watching uh, up to several seconds or so of a commercial. That's the way it goes, so be it. So I hope that as the, as the updates keep coming, they'll fix some of that. They'll put some time specifically into the Apple TV version, support this remote better. A lot of the times for me as is, I don't necessarily use that remote anyway. I have Control 4, I have my Neos, and everything that I might want to do to watch shows, jump, and so on, using the Neo remotes, from Control 4 works just as well 
So I've got the Neo in my hand now. If I go ahead and I start this show, of course with the Neo I can't swipe, but I can pause, I can jump, I still get my thumbnails. So this is how I, this is how I use my electronics. The Apple TV remote itself is usually in a drawer and I, I'm not even using the swiping or trying to use any voice capabilities or whatnot. Another thing to, to take a quick note of with regards to DirecTV Stream in the Apple TV 4K is it does integrate with the TV app. So if you use the TV app, if you like how it pulls together content from different sources, you will find DirecTV Stream content, uh, particularly in your up next list here. So we demoed watching the zoo on demand. If I click that, I launch over to the DirecTV Stream app. Animal Planet, the zoo. And it tosses me right back into that same episode that, that I was demoing for the on-demand content. Pretty nice. Again, if you like the Apple TV app. Um, I think it's overall using the TV app is pretty polarizing, but maybe that's a, an idea for another time. So it's there, it's integrated. Take advantage of it if you like. And then lastly, I did enable the developer HUD options to get all the streaming details, try and get a measure of the quality of the direct TV stream playback here. But unfortunately, I don't know if the app blocks it or doesn't specifically support it, but the information didn't show up. So unfortunately, I can't give hard numbers, uh, bit rates and so on for the streaming quality. So that is direct TV stream on the latest model, Apple TV 4K, latest version of the app, with the nice recently added thumbnails, all the settings, all the UI pieces, on-demand, guide, my library, and more. If you have any questions about it, post them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer. And I'll probably do similar overviews of using DirecTV Stream coming up both on an iPhone, on an, or on an iPhone, on an iPad, and on a web UI as well. We'll go ahead and break it down on all the different ways, at least in the Apple ecosystem and such, that you might want to use this service. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for more content. If you like that video, please subscribe and definitely share and tell your friends. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, please use the Amazon Associate links for your shopping in the contents below.